In this video, we're gonna to start to build a new feed Aspen game for Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com, and in this video, we're gonna to start to build out a new feed Aspen game. And this game's gonna be different than the last feed Aspen game we did. We're gonna build on what we've been doing in the last few videos, and we're gonna make it class-based. As you can see, we're gonna have a box where the food kind of bops around, and then Aspen will come in and eat it. We're gonna also set up in the future videos, we're gonna make it a little bit more difficult by color coding the food and saying, okay, you only eat the red ones, and if you get hit by the blue ones, you die, and all kinds of stuff. We'll get into that in the next few videos. In this video, we're gonna to start to set up the box and the randomization for the food and get that all going, and that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series, so check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got the code we were working on in the last video. If you didn't see that video, check the playlist. I've renamed it Aspen Collide 4. It was Aspen Collide 3 earlier. And this is what we're gonna end up doing, like I said, in this video. We need to build this little box here and we need to make our food move in all different directions before it just went straight down. And we wanna keep the food in the box. And here we can see Aspen is outside and we can come in here. And just for now, I mean, this is very easy. Obviously, this is not much of a game. We can very easily win this thing, right? We'll make it harder as we go. But for now, we just wanna set up this basic system here. So let's head over to our game class. And here we've got different functions. And let's create a new function. And let's call this draw. We always wanna pass in self. Now, what we wanna do here is draw our box. We've looked at drawing things on the screen in other videos in this playlist, so we already know how to do this. It's really not any different than stuff we already learned, even though we're doing class-based system right now. So let's go pygame.draw, and we wanna draw a rect, and we wanna put it on our screen. Remember, we called this thing screen way down here when we first created this guy, right? Or I suppose up here at the top. Uh, yeah, right here where we defined our screen. We wanna put it in screen, and what color do we want this border to be? Well, I'm gonna make it blue for now, so that's zero, zero three six six zero that's just a shade of blue that i like it's a hex code you could also just type in blue if you wanted just a basic blue all right so now we want this at zero and a hundred and then all the way over to our window underscore width and then how high do we want this and of course this is we're starting at zero and a hundred and we want this well we want the window height minus some amount because we don't want it to stretch all the way to the bottom. We want there to be some space for Aspen's head to be. And now what width do we want this? Well, let's say four or three, now let's go four. All right, so, all right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. So let's head over to our terminal and my C slash games directory, my virtual environment is turned on. Let's run Python Aspen underscore collide four dot pi. And nothing has happened because we didn't actually call the draw function, right? We've got this function, but here in our update function, we need to call self.draw. Doy. <laughs> All right, so save this, head back over here, run this guy again, and now we have this nice little box, and we've got our food just dropping from the top down to the bottom, which is not what we want, but that's what we set up in the last video, so that's what it does. So, okay, that's okay. You know, up here in our init function, let's keep track of the score too while I'm thinking about it. Let's go self.score, we'll set that equal to zero. And then down here in our check collision, instead of just printing out the number of items that are left, let's print out our self.score to the terminal at the end, All right? So if we save this and run it real quick, just to make sure that worked. So let's come up here and let's just go one, All right? So now if we close, well, it starts out at zero because ah, we did not plus equal. So we need to go, whenever there's a collision, we need to go self.score plus equals one. All right, now let's save this and run it. I'm on fire today, all the mistakes. All right, so boom, one. All right, and then we get one. Let's run it again just to make sure. And let's go one, two, and close it. And it prints out two at the end there, okay. Now we wanna work on our food moving around in different directions. As it is now, it just comes from the top and goes to the bottom. And we can come down here to our food class and we can see, yeah, that's how we set up the velocity to just sort of take the rect y, which is the up and down and just increase it by the velocity. 
at a steady pace. And remember, our velocity is a random number between one and two. Let's increase this to one and three. Since they're gonna be moving around, we want different velocities between just one and two. Let's have one and three. You might put one and five if you want them to really move around at different velocities. Each one have different options, but we'll leave it at three for now. Now let's play with this update. We talked about many videos ago, moving things around randomly. And instead of using X and Y, let's use DX and DY for like the change in X and Y, right? So let's create actually in our initialization, let's create those X and Y variables. So let's create random motion. So we've got a random motion. Now we want to define these. So let's go self.dx equals and self.dy equals. Now, what are these going to be? Well, we want them to go uh, positive or negative, up or down, left or right, depending, right? So let's just create a randomness. So let's go random.choice. And we want to choose from, let's say, negative one and one. For x, it could be positive or negative. For y, it could be positive or negative. So that's what dx and dy are starting out. As we update, we want to move our items, move our food at that velocity in that direction. So think of this as like the direction, positive or negative. This velocity is our velocity, obviously, that we set up here that can be either one, two, or three, right? But now we need to move these guys. So let's go self.rect.x and set this equal to plus equal because we wanna move these as we're going along. Every time it updates, we wanna move it. So we're plus equal, we're adding each time it updates and it's updating continuously. That's what makes them move, right? So let's go self.dx times whatever our self.velocity is. So we can copy this guy and paste it again and just do it for y, rect.y and self y. And that looks good. Now here, this is how we used to have it, uh, just steady straight down. So I'll comment that out. And now we just have this. So, okay, let's go ahead and save that and see what we've got. Now this isn't quite gonna do the trick, but it's gonna get us a little bit there. Whoa, all of a sudden you see they, all a bunch of them just started out going straight off the screen up to the top. So let's run this again. Again, a bunch of them just went straight up to the top and the rest of them are leaving, right? So this is not what we want. They're all going in random directions and random velocities, which is nice, but we need to, for one, have them start out in this box. And for two, we need to make sure they don't leave the box, right? So looking at our box, our game here, let's make this whole thing a little bit bigger just for fun. Let's come up here and instead of eight by 500, let's make this like nine by 600, just a, a little bit bigger so we have a bigger playing area. So now how do we keep all those things, one, from going off the screen and two, inside those boxes? Well, let's come down here to our food and let's keep from leaving the screen. And before we do that, if we come down here, Aspen is at 400, let's move him down a little bit or move her down a little bit. So let's save this and run it. Uh, just to see, oh, I moved him up, <laughs> I moved her up. Well, we made our screen bigger. So uh, this is probably, let's put her at 510. Let's try that. I wanna make sure she's well outside of this box. So, okay, that's good. And now we're starting our food up at the top. We probably wanna start it inside this box. So while we're thinking about it, let's also move that. Here we started out our food at 10, so down 10 right at the top. Let's move this down 200. If we save this, we probably won't be able to tell just yet. Oh yeah, you could sort of see they all started out inside the box if you were watching close enough. So, okay, that looks good. Now we just need to make sure they stay in the box. So that's gonna be in our food class in our update section. Let's keep these guys from leaving the screen. So we're gonna use if statements, right? And we're gonna say, hey, if the rect is past a certain spot, don't let it go past that certain spot, or if it's to a certain spot. So let's go if self dot rect dot left. Remember the rect is the rect in this class, so it's, it's the food, right? So if it's less than or equal to zero, or if self dot rect dot right, so we're gonna do left and right in the same if statement. And if that is greater than or equal to our window underscore width, 
right? So if it's greater than the width, don't let it keep going, right? It's never going to be greater than, it's going to be equal to the width, right? So if it hits the width, it's gone too far. Same thing here for left. If it's less than or equal to, so if it's equal to zero, don't let it go any further off the screen of zero. So what do we want to do if that happens? Well, let's just change the direction. So let's go self. And we know the direction because that's self.dx left and right. We're going to have that equal to, let's just turn it negative. So let's go negative times self.dx, right? So, okay, that looks good. Now we could do the same thing for up and down, top and bottom. So let's go if uh, self.rect.top is less than or equal to 100 because our box that we just drew, that's down 100, right? Starts the screen down 100. So that's sort of the boundary area that we want to deal with here. So, uh, so if it's less than or equal to 100 or if self.rect.bottom is greater than or equal to 500. And why 500? Because we went window height minus 200 for our box and our window height is 900 minus 200, that's 700. But then we also have on the bottom another 200 where Aspen is sitting. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. 500, right? So, okay. And if that's the case, we just want to go self.dy equals, again, we just want to flip it to negative. So if it's going a certain direction, positive or negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. So if it was going negative, it'll flip it to positive. If it was going positive, a positive times a negative is a negative, it'll flip it the other direction. So uh, times self.dy. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this guy one more time. And boom, we get all of our food moving around. Now, some of them are kind of dumb. This one's right on the edge and it's just going to go very slowly going up and down. All right, that's fine. Um, the rest of these are kind of randomly moving. Some of them are going faster than others. Some of them are going the same. That's just random choice, uh, picking the same velocity for those two ones. Uh, we could create a little bit more craziness here by setting our velocity between one and, I don't know, say five. Make some of them faster, some of them slower. Oh, now they're really spinning around, some of them. And the same guy here is uh, just sort of meh. It's going to happen every time like that. Nope, this time he's going in another direction. Just random choice there. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got Aspen down here. She can come in and start playing and, you know, get the food. And again, this is very simple. It's easy to win this, right? Because they can't leave. So you're always going to get them. So we're going to have to build in some hardness and more difficulty. And I think we'll do that by introducing some color. We'll put in like one red food and you have to get the red one. And every time you get the red one, a new one will turn red. And in the meantime, if a blue one touches you, you die or something, right? We'll build that in going forward. But yeah, we're starting to get there. So now Aspen can still go off the screen. We probably want to fix that. We've learned how to do that in this video and in other videos. So you should be able to get that figured out on your own. We'll probably build that in later on just as an aside. But yeah, so far so good and pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.